Greetings mortals and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews. And today begins our Halloween weekend of the year. Today we are going to be looking at the new releases from October 29th. Those being Kin by Whitechapel, Bleed the Future by Archspire, Hushed and Grim by Mastodon, and Coherence by Bellacor. So, we've checked out these albums today. I personally was able to check out Kin, Hushed and Grim, and a little bit of Bleed the Future. Yeah, I listened to Coherence, Kin, and Bleed the Future. So, I guess I'll start with Hushed and Grim, because I checked it out, and it's one of the most unique Mastodon albums I've ever heard. Now, Mastodon's the kind of band that always does a unique experience every time they release an album. Mm -hmm. But this one was something else. First of all, it's an hour and a half long. Ouch. I think it's the longest they've ever done. I've never seen them do something that long before. And it was really interesting because it was... There's a lot of just chill songs. And this band's done that before. It's not, it's not the first time they've done something like that. You know, mm -hmm. like as long as... Hell, they did an EP that was all chill songs. And honestly, I think if you made Cold Dark Place into an album, you'd get this album. A lot of relaxing sounding stuff. Um, and I, it was kind of weird because it kind of felt a little bit repetitive in that sense. Like, okay, you know, where's the contour? It's just kind of like the same thing going. And then push, Pushing the Tides happened, which was, I think, the first single, which we also reacted to. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it, it changed the pace. And then from there, it was just kind of different. However, uh, I do recall the solo and had it all. That was a great solo, very slow burn kind of solo. And I'm not sure the, the end of the last, the last track's name, Gigant something. <laughs> it's huh. losing me, but I remember the ending of that song was just beautiful. I, I love that. But I do think this album, for how long it is, might be a little bit tough to listen to for a lot of audiences, just because it's really long, really sad, and kind of has a specific tone that it sticks with for almost the whole album. But I, I don't like. I think it's good. I just think it's really the kind of album you really need to sink your teeth into for a while to really gel with it well. Yeah, I'll listen to it when I get a chance, but I didn't have a chance today. Um, I don't know which one to start with. I'll, I guess I'll start with what I started with today. The first thing in the morning, I listened to "Bleed the Future" by Archspire. This is an album that a lot of people have been hyped for lately. We reacted to a couple of their videos uh, for this album, um, Drone Corpse Aviator, and. The was Golden Mouth one? of Ruin. There was another one. Yes, exactly. Um, so, listen to it. Thought it was fucking awesome. Um, there's uh, a lot going on, obviously. This band is known for being just blazingly fast. I did clock some of the songs. I clocked at least two songs over 400 BPM, which is insane. One of those being the last song, AUM, and another one being Acrid Cannon. Um, AUM, I had at 410 and Acrid Cannon, just right around 400. The rest of the songs, between 330 and 375 each. Like, this album is blazing fast. This drummer is a unit. The singer is a fucking specimen. Like, these guys are aliens. I don't know how it's humanly possible for them to do this stuff, but it's not all like that. There's stuff like Drain of Incarnation has a cool acoustic intro. Little thing like that, break up the pace. Um, you got Abandoned the Linear, has some really thick, juicy bass sections. Um, just really cool stuff. My only issue that I have with it at this point, and this is after two listens, is that a lot of it sounds a little samey-samey, which is probably, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of expected that, right? Um, but I still fucking loved it. I thought it was awesome. So, um... We both listened to... Oh, so you didn't listen to Coherence or you did? I did not. I know nothing about that record. Okay, let me touch a little bit on Coherence before we get into Kit. We both listened to Kit by Whitechapel. So, Bellacore dropped an album today. I've heard this band before. Um, got into them a little bit, but not too much. This is my first time listening to a full album. I liked it. It was good. It's about an hour long, only eight tracks. So, the tracks are a little bit lengthy. Um, but nothing was really grabbing my ear. It was one of those albums where it was kind of there and I was enjoying it for a bit. Uh, but nothing was really, you know, grabbing me. There were some some standout tracks, two specifically. One is called Valance, and the other one's called Hidden Window. Um, Hidden Window was the, more, the biggest highlight track for me because it really got in some really cool grooves in the third act. 
Again, this song's about eight and a half ish minutes long. So third act before it starts really getting good, that's a little worrisome. But either way, overall, very good album. Um, from what I heard, uh, very Amon Amarth type of stuff. But if you can picture Amon Amarth but with longer songs, that's kind of the vibe I was getting. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was good, enjoyable, but nothing was like amazing. I wasn't like really looking at it going, fuck, this is awesome, this is awesome. So I'll definitely give it more of a chance, but on first impressions, it was like kind of okay. Now, as for Kin, we did talk a little bit about this album together before we started recording today. However, uh, I liked it quite a bit. I do think it is in the same vein as The Valley, but it does not sound the same. You still have, you know, emotional, clean vocals and stuff, and you have the crushing, brutal moments as well, but it just does not, I wouldn't say it compares. I, I, I didn't feel reminded of The Valley. And one kind of thing that, you know, really hit me a little weird is that the first track starts with this, like, acoustic, almost country sound, and that kind of caught me by surprise. But, uh, and the riffs were a lot more melodic than you would expect from this band, but you got something like Lost Boy right after, which is one of the singles, which was an amazing song. Loved that one. And, uh, the transition between that and the Blood Soaked Symphony was quite nice. Um... And I, I found a very big push and pull between very sad sounding and very heavy sounding. In a sense, perhaps comparable to Fit for an Autopsy, because I know they've been doing that kind of thing lately, especially on their latest record, so you kind of get a lot of the emotions pulling back and forth. I will say, though, the last song in the album, which is the title track, has a lot of power to it. It is possibly the most emotional track on the album, and you really feel the weight of all the songs upon you when you get to that song. Yeah, so I listened to it. I thought it was great, too, just to put that out there, first and foremost. Um, so Whitechapel, they did the Valley, and they definitely did the experimental stuff. You know, um, they had a couple songs on there, when a witch, when a Demon Defiles a Witch, uh, with the soft singing, and a couple other ones like that. And p fans reacted very positively. Then they released a couple tracks of this album, Orphan being one of them. Very soft, very emotional, um, you know, very exposing song. Fans reacted very positively to it. My gripe with this is that I think they took it a little too far because I just based on a couple listens, it seems like half the album, maybe more than that, is clean vocals, soft, sad stuff. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but what that does is it alienates the fans that really got the band to where they are because at the end of the day, we're, we're, we like Whitechapel because of the death core. That should be their fundamental. They shouldn't be switching to... Because basically, a lot of this album, to me, sounded like stuff that Tool would do, or like maybe Deftones. Stuff that's a lot softer, a lot more alternative. And again, there's not a real problem with that as far as how good it sounds, because it sounds fucking good. But it's alienating to fans that want Deathcore from Whitechapel, which is problematic and could be an issue going forward. It's really funny you mentioned Tool, because I actually wrote... The, the bridge of Lost Boy, which gets, you know, a little chill, reminded me of Tool. I wrote the same thing like about Tool. Lost Boy for the same part. It's definitely a Tool vibe part. Um, to the Wolves is the best song in the album for me. Um, super cool solo. It's like a Slayer vibe to it, which is pretty cool. But it's one of the only, one of the, like the few songs that is like heavy all the way through. A lot of them are a mixture of heavy and clean. Um... And another thing I'll point out, I mentioned Tool, I mentioned Deftones, because those are two different bands that this reminded me of. But another one, and I, this is why I hate it, they reminded me of Five Finger Death Punch. Because sometimes when he's singing, and this was in the song Orphan, which we had heard before, but when I heard it again today, he reminded me of Ivan Moody in that song. Some of the, some of the notes he was hitting and some of the intonations and stuff. I don't know. Five Finger Death Punch puts a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. So, they've they've really been back and forth if we're going to comment on that. They have been, but you know what? Let's not turn into this into a Five Figure Death Punch video. Um, I like the album, but I don't know if it has the staying power that Whitechapel is known to have. It definitely didn't hit home like the like the Valley did on a first impression. This that's definitely for sure. But it's definitely got room to grow. Um, so I don't know. So with that, we have decided to. For what we're going to review next week, we have decided on Bleed the Future by Archspire. That's going to be the album we focus on and we're going to listen to over and over and over 
and we will review that album next week to give our final thoughts, and we're going to rate it. So that's all we have for you guys today for this new releases video. Remember to subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, and tell us in the comments below, what do you think of today's new releases? I'm TV Fish, and I'll buy myself to keep the horns up. <laughs>